ready? Um, so, and then, um, uh, you know, before I even start about this year's team, I'll tell you, because I'm always talking about stuff. If you noticed, Dave Telep had a good had a good tweet last week. We're 41, and again, not that, because I'm not big on rankings, but just about parity. As I always talk about, everyone's good. There are no bad teams. There are no bad players or coach. Everyone's good. But last year, 51 of the top 100 players um, uh, went, there was 51 different schools got a top 100 player last year. And already this year at this point, 41 schools have already got a top 100 player. But the point is, it's all spread out. Everyone's good. It doesn't matter what league and who you're playing. You've got to bring it because everybody's good. It's not about predictions or rankings or or what you were ranked or this or that. And I'm just using that as, an, as a, as a as a baseline, just to show you that people got players, man. Everyone's got players, um, and there are no. This isn't what it was in the '80s, or early '90s, or early 2000s. Where people in stockpile. Everybody's good. So, with that being said, um, with our team, uh, <coughs> guys have uh, done a uh, a nice job right now. They're they're they they they've really worked hard. They've had a good summer, good preseason. Um, we're in our conditioning phase right now. I'm on the court getting ready for our first practice next uh, Thursday, October 3rd. Um, we, have, we have some work to do. We've got a, we've got a long way to go. We're not near a finished product at all. <clears throat> um, um, we've got, uh, you know, obviously there's some strengths we have. And we've got some weaknesses. Um, but we've got to get a lot better in a lot of different areas. That's, that's for sure. That's one. Uh, secondly, I know a lot of people, uh, which we're excited about, obviously I'm always, I, I think anytime you can market the program and people talk about the program, uh, even in the preseason way when they're talking about rankings and everything else, I think that's, that's, all, that's important because it shows that the program is extremely relevant on a national stage. Um, but, uh, uh, but all that has to be earned in order for us to produce. It's about production. So anyone who says we've got this or we can do that or you need to do, hey, we got to produce on the floor. And that's something that's been, and our guys know it. Um, we're not getting into what was predicted or what was uh, said. I mean, we've got to produce on the floor, and, uh, and we know that. So we're, we're excited for the season. Um, our first official practice will be October 3rd. October 8th, we've got Memphis Madness. Again, free. Pack that forum out. Uh, the event <coughs> autographs will start at 7 p.m. And uh, we will start at, at uh, the, the actual activity will start at 8, but you can get autographs starting at 7. Again, free event. We want it to have a tremendous, tremendous, um, uh, uh, again, sellout crowd as we've always had and have the place packed. So that's important to us. Our, with, with, uh, and plus it's going to be on, on ESPN. Uh, I think ESPNU will be uh, Memphis Madness. So, uh, again, uh, what's that? Yeah, October 18th. October 18th, that Friday night. And then, um, you know, and then uh, obviously with our schedule and everything else, we've got a great schedule, so uh, we're looking forward to it. It should, should be a fun year and a great win Saturday by uh, Coach Fuente and the Tigers. I mean, just an awesome win. Go Tigers on that. They really played well. And um, so that was, that was really good. So with that, any questions, fire away. Josh, with um with moving into the new conference and all that kind of stuff, but there is a sense of you guys do have a target on your back this year because of all the players that you have, not just because being the best in conference at USA, just being one of the best teams in the country. The mentality, does it have to change from trying to go out to earn a respect in a, in a weaker conference to now being a team that's going to be gun for each time you hit the floor? Yeah, well, I, 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 again, I, I mean, the Americans are a heck of a league. We know that. I mean, the basketball, I mean, you look at our – night and night out. I mean, look at our first five games. I mean, I, I mean, again, our first most important games, uh, November 14th for Austin P. But if you look at our opening schedule for our league games, I mean, we're like at South Florida, I think home Cincinnati, home Connecticut, at Louisville, at Temple. I mean, you know, that, I mean, that type of, you know, that type of uh, schedule. So it's just, it's going to be fun. So, but what our non-conference schedule will allow us to be tested in preparation for the American. And we'll know early and often where we stand, what we need to do to get better, what are some of our strengths, what of our weaknesses are. And, um, um, and, and I know everywhere around town, people are excited about, about this year's team. And, you know, we've got, we've got 
a wide margin. You know, you've got senior players and you've got up underclassmen. So, um, you know, the biggest thing is, is again, I, I, I'm not going to take anything away from our, our ability to win a bunch of games in Conference USA because, like I said, just a stat I mentioned, I think that's hard to do what we did to leave on a – on an undefeated win streak, even going back to the year before, that's not something that's easy to do. So, uh, in fact, I remember this this in, in Los Angeles this year in April. Uh, Brad Stevens and I were talking, and he said, "Of all this is, you know, he was still the coach at Butler. He said, of all his feats as a as a college coach to this point, his greatest feat was going undefeated in, in the Horizon League and not losing a game. More than even actually going to the championship, it was so hard." to go through a whole year undefeated in league play and conference play and not lose a game knowing that you couldn't have one slip up to do that. He said of all that, that was his best feat. And, you know, it's a heck of a feat to do that when you look back on it. But that's last year. We're in 13-14 now. So, um, Mike, I mean, we, we've got we've to be we got to be at a high level every time we step on the floor. But that's just not in, in conference. I mean, we've got to be at a high level in non-conference. I mean, we don't have any time for, for – uh, we don't have any margin of error when you look at our schedule. What's the biggest challenge, Josh, would you say? I mean, you got a lot of veterans that are back, but you're mixing in a lot of new kids and yeah. there's only one basketball. Yeah, no, I, I mean, you know, Matt, I think key things, you know, one, you know, you know knock on wood, you got to stay healthy. I think that's obviously important. Uh, we got to make some shots. Um, we are not a smash mouth team. When I say a smash mouth team, we're not going to come down and, 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 and we are better when we're trying to score in the 80s and 90s, and you know, high 70s, 80s, 90s, when we can play as fast as possible than trying to keep the game in, in, in the 50s. And, and let me say this, because uh, I, heard, I heard guys talking about it, about the Michigan State game last year. Uh, they kicked our butt. And, uh, yeah, Jeff was talking about it, and they, and he, and he, and they kicked our butt, and they did. Uh, but we were – part of the reason is we could not – we got in a, in, a, in a segment in the second half and also early part of the first half where we could not score the ball. And uh, so all that being said, we have to be able to score the ball. We have opportunity – we have scores, but we've got to be able to score the ball when, when you're in situations of, of teams trying to force you into a smash-mouth game. And it will be interesting, the new rules this year – with the, with the, they are trying to create offensive ability, more offensive production. The new rules, if you put at any point two hands on an automatic foul, if you drive the ball and the defender is not two feet set while you're, already, while you're in the midst of your drive, it's, an automatic, it's supposed to be an automatic block. You already have to be in, in position of a charge before, you, before you've cuffed the ball. So the second you pick the ball up, if that defender is not planted, it should be an automatic block. They're trying to increase scoring. Our focal point has to be attack the basket. We did not get to the free throw line last year enough. Um, Jaron Johnson, and he knows this, didn't get to the free throw line. Look at his stats. Poor didn't get to the free throw line. He's got to get to the free throw line. We have to get to the free throw line. And that's a big thing for us to be able to attack. And I think that was one of the things when you look back when Michigan State, besides they kicked our butt on the glass, we drove the ball too much on the banana. I call it around the three-point line. We didn't get north and south, which is a credit to Michigan State. But we have to attack the paint and try to get to the free throw line. And especially, we've got to manufacture points in those type of games. So, and we're going to see some of that in the American, where teams are going to try to play smash mouth with you, with us, and we're going to have to be able to win those games. We're going to have to be able to win those games, and you're going to have to advance in the tournament. If you're fortunate to get there, you've got to be able to beat those type of teams to advance because you're going to play that type of team somewhere along the way. How do you do that? Uh, I know you, the rules have changed a little bit and you want to attack the basket more, but you're, it's, it would seem going into the season you're a little bit lighter up front than, than you were last year. You don't have, uh, other than the big freshman, you don't really have a lot of big guys. Up inside. Well, we, we, you know, Jarvis, I know, you know, we're, we're going to need to play defensively is try to create as many possessions as possible. You know, we, we do need to press. And, and, and we have pressed. People need to know, you know, hey, coach, have you, you know, we're going to press. I mean, we're going to be committed to it. It doesn't mean that it's just a, uh, uh, a, you know, maybe a situation calls where we need to take it off or whatever it may be. Or, you know, we're, we're playing to win, too. So whatever is necessary to win and uh, whether that's whatever, whatever it takes to win the game. But we're going we're gonna to get after it and try to create as many possessions and play as fast as possible. Me as a coach have to understand that if we're going to do that, we are going to give up some open shots at times. There's going to be a layup or two given up. There's going to be a three-point shot open, given up. 
um, what you're doing when you're pressing is hopefully in, in time you're wearing a, you're wearing somebody out. And so our whole two words we've talked about is attack offensively and I mean, we got to attack offensively and defensively because that is our personnel this year is attack. And and um, and also on the press is we've got to be really good because we don't have we don't have DJ we got to be really good defensively because let me tell you something DJ Stephens saved us so many times last year. We look at our defense Guys broke us down. We get to the and DJ came out of nowhere and saved us. I mean, he he saved us. I can I can't tell you how many times the guys saved us. They don't even come up in the stat sheet. In fact, I was talking to uh, Southern Miss coach and he told me that they actually game plan for DJ that when they caught the ball, they would actually go their post guy. They would go screen DJ, try to find wherever he was just to screen him to keep him away from the ball because he affected them so much that that would they game plan just trying to screen him away so he couldn't even get near the ball on the defensive end. So, you know, we're going to have to be able to move our feet guard and try to get some steals in the backcourt. Um, so, and we're long. We're long. We're a long team. We're an athletic team. We're a quick team. Uh, Shaq looks really good right now. Shaq looks really, really good. But we are not – and, again, toughness, toughness, you don't have to be big to be tough. Toughness is rebounding. Rebounding is just a desire. Toughness is getting 50-50 balls. Toughness is sprinting the floor. Toughness is diving on the floor. Toughness is is you know, you know, you know, stepping up and making big shots. Those are toughness. So you don't need to be 6'8", 280 to be tough. What you need to do is have a mentality of toughness and, and, and be able to make plays or when a guy's kind of nailed you a little bit, still be able to drive and attack and get into the paint.